Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jimmy here and welcome to another poker vlog. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the delay in the vlogs. I've been super busy and even right now I'm packing up because I'm flying out tomorrow to Miami to attend a poker cruise. Yes, that's right. I'm attending the Norwegian Poker Challenge 2022. It's the same tournament that I won in 2016, so I'm really excited about that. And let's get right into the vlog. Today, we'll be looking at one of my sessions that I played at the Aria. It's going to be a 5, 10, 20 session. And uh, let's just get right into it. Enjoy. We get a seat at the 5, 10, 20 table. I buy in for $2,000 and lose a couple of small pots till we get deuces in the cutoff. And I open to $50. The big blind and the third blind both call. We go three ways to the flop. The flop is queen jack five rainbow. It checks to me and I have a nut advantage on a board like this. So I see at $40. The big blind folds and the third blind decides to call. Turn is a 4 and completes the rainbow. This card's a brick, and I can see I'm calling the flop with a jack, a queen, or a straight draw like 9-10. The strongest hand he should be comfortable here with is like queen jack or pocket fives, which is just a narrow part of his range. He checks, and I'm gonna bet again. If he calls, I'm gonna evaluate the river. I bet $150, and he does make the call. Now I'm actually getting kinda worried. The river's a jack of spades and he checks. And I feel like if he had a jack here, he should be betting. After I fire two streets, I'm checking back a lot of my hands that have some sort of showdown value, especially because he can easily have a jack here. So when he checks, I feel like he's the one that has a hand that wants to get the showdown, most likely a queen. Now, I can still have a lot of very good hands in my uncapped range that beats a queen, like pocket aces, pocket kings, or ace queen. If I check here, I'm gonna lose a ton of the time here, so I decide to go for one last attempt at a bluff. The pot's about $500, and I can't make this decision easy for villain. I bet slightly over the pot and put out $600 in chips. The villain looks really annoyed, gives me a smirk, and proceeds to fold. I decide it's time to set the tone of this session and show the bluff. I mean, it's good for the game, right? Feeling good from that bluff, we get an amazing hand, red aces in the small blind. It folds around to us, we raise to 80, the big blind calls, and the straddle folds. And yes, I'm going to be using straddle and third blind interchangeably from now on. The dealer throws down a flop of 8-5 deuce, 2 spades and 1 club. And when the flop is low like this, we should check most of the time, especially when I do not hold the ace of spades, but it is okay to bet at it once in a while for balance. I decide this is one of those times and bet $70. He makes the call and we go quickly to a turn. The turn is the queen of spades. And if I had checked the flop, I'd probably check here again with the aces. But since I bet the flop, I've already decided that I'd play my hand offensively. So I'm going to try to target the middle of villain's range here, like pocket pairs, an eight, or flush draw. I bet 200 he doesn't think too long before waving the white flag and another pot comes our way. I'm playing on a must move table, so I get moved. And unfortunately, this table just isn't as fun as the last table as there are people that don't want to straddle. So we're just gonna be uh, playing a basic 5-10 game. But the good news is right after switching tables, I get aces once again. I barely even have enough time to set up my camera. Anyways, I open to $30 from the cutoff and both the blinds call. We're gonna go to a flop three ways. The flop comes king five four, two spades and one club. It checks to me and I should still have the best hand here. I bet $40. The small blind decides it's time for him to make a stand here and he check raises me to $120. Suspicious, but there's no way I'm folding an over pair and I have the ace of spades as a backup, so I call. The turn is a three of diamonds and he checks. When he check raised me on the flop, he usually either has a set or a flush draw. I was fully expecting him to bet the turn if he actually had a set, but him checking here makes me lean towards him having a flush draw. 
I don't want to bet here and get raised and be put into a tough spot. Checking here also allows the villain to bluff the river if he did have a flush draw and miss. So I check, hoping the river doesn't come a spade. The river is pretty safe, it's the queen of hearts. Now I'm ready to call any bet he makes, and if he checks, I can maybe bet small and get some value. But he does make a bet of $250. At this point, I pot controlled hard already on the flop and on the turn, and if I was leaning towards him having a flush draw, then calling here is just the obvious choice. I call, and he flips over 8-7 of spades. It's just as we expected, we managed to pick up a missed flush draw as a bluff. They say good things comes in threes, and that's exactly what I get in the cutoff. We finally start straddling again, and the low jack opens the $50. I call, and we go to a flop, heads up. The flop is perfect, it comes queen 6-3 rainbow. We flop bottom set. He checks, and having bottom set here is actually better than having top set, because it unblocks villain from having a strong hand like a queen. We're pretty deep, and I need to start putting money in right now. I bet $30 and he calls. The turn is a jack of spades and he checks. And this is a pretty good card for us because he can have a hand like queen jack here. And if he did, it would be a bit cooler for him and we would win a huge pot off him. I fire again one more time, this time to $60 and he calls once more. The river is the 8 of hearts and he checks for a third time. At this point, it's very likely he only has like a one pair type of hand. The pot's about $300 and I want to get as much money out of villain as possible. I want hands like pocket 7s, 9s, or queen to call, so I decide on the size of $230. Just really big to try to get maximum value. Unfortunately, villain doesn't bite, but at least we got two streets of value. Alright, moving right along to our next hand, we get pocket jacks in the UTG plus one and I open for $40. The button likes his hand and decides to 3-bet to 160 Here, I would mix between 3-betting and calling, but this time, I elect to call. We go heads up to the flop and it comes queen, 10, 9, 2 clubs and 1 diamond. We have second pair with an up and down straight draw with a backdoor flush draw. I check here as I would my entire range, and he checks back. The turn is the queen of spades. I check, and he bets a big bet of $300. I'm not folding here with my pair and straight draw, so I make the call. The dealer puts out a three of spades for the river, and I check. Now he puts me into a tough spot. He bets $500, and this is a very close decision for me. I have a bluff catcher here, but I don't know too many hands that will bet turn and river. The only bluff that he has a good chance of having here is maybe ace-king. And with that in mind, $500 just seemed like a very value sizing. So after thinking about it for a bit, I think I'm just going to make a tough choice here and fold. Alright, that was a minor setback, but it's time to move right along. We get pocket threes again, and this time on the button. The cutoff opens for 50 and I hit a set last time with threes, so maybe I could do it again. I make the call, and everyone else folds. We go heads up to the flop, and it comes jack, four, four, rainbow. We miss our set, but at least we do have two pair, and we should still be ahead of villain a lot here. Cutoff makes a small bet of $30, and I don't think it's wise to raise here, so I just make the call. Oh, by the way, did I say we missed our set? Well, never mind, because the turn is the three of diamonds. We actually bowed up. He checks, and I think here if he had anything at all, he should still be betting this turn. It's not scary at all for him. So I don't think he has much. I decide to be sneaky and hope he catches a piece of the river. I just check back. The rivers a deuce of diamonds, and that's an amazing card for us, because now a flush is possible. He bets out $250. Now, when he puts out a big bet like this, I'm praying he somehow has the backdoor flush. At the same time, I'm also trying to think, if he had a hand like Jack-9 or Jack-10, what type of sizing I could make so, so that those hands call too. In the end, I decide $700 is a good number, so I put the chips in. He snap calls me, 
And of course, I show him the bad news. He throws his hand away and we win another massive pot. So far so good, we are up $1100 so far and this will be our GTO hand of the day. And I think it's a good one to study because people often play ace-king way too f***ly at the wrong times. Okay, so there's a reason why I censored myself. When I was making this vlog, I thought it'd be a cool idea to do a quiz in the GTO hand of the day, but what I said kind of just revealed the answer a bit, so I had to censor myself post-production to make the quiz a bit more fun. So let's get started. We get ace-king on the small blind. Under the gun plus one opens to $70, the button calls, and with a monster like ace-king, I'm definitely gonna bump it up here. I make it $300, under the gun plus one makes the call and the button folds. The flop comes jack 10, eight, two clubs and one spade. All right, pop quiz time. What would you guys do here? Would you guys A, check, B, bet small 25 to 33% pot, C, bet medium like 50 to 75% pot, or D, bet pot or over bet this pot? I'll give you guys three seconds to answer. And if you guys need more time, feel free to just pause this video. And the answer is A, we should check here. And a common mistake I see people make is three betting their ace king, then firing 100% of the time into just about any flop. Well, this flop in particular isn't too good for us, and I'll get into why in our GTO analysis, but in this instance, I decide to check and he checks back. The turn is six of clubs. And if I had the ace or the king of clubs, I can definitely put in a bet here. But since I do not, my hand's just pretty garbage at this point since I'm not going to be drawing to anything better than a pair by the river. So I elect to check. And villain decides to give me a free card, he checks back. The river is no help, it's the deuce of spades. After checking the flop and the turn, there's really nothing I can rep at this point since the pot was so pot controlled. Villain is probably in bluff catch mode, so I check and he checks back. And he shows ace jack of diamonds. I lose, but it's not a major loss with ace king, so I'm not gonna complain about it, but let's get into our GTO analysis and if, see if I played the hand, okay. Okay, so I'm sure most of my viewers already know what this is, but if not, then this is GTO wizard. They have over 10 million pre-soft solutions saved in their database, and I always use them to study. I also use it to verify to see if I played my hand correctly, like what I'm about to do now. If you want to dominate the poker scene, then this tool is a must. You can use the link in the description below to get 10% off your next subscription. Okay, let's get started with the hand. Since it's an eight-handed game and not nine-handed, I'm gonna pretend that UTG plus two is UTG plus one. So UTG plus two opens and the button calls. And as you can see here, GTO says I should be three betting to 14 big blinds, which is $280. But since the initial razor sized up a bit, I made an adjustment for it. UTG plus one calls and the button folds. So far, so good. The flop was jack of spades, 10 of clubs, and eight of clubs. And as we can see here, we should be checking our entire range here. The reason for this is because we're at a position and we're actually behind villain in the entire equity distribution. Let's think back to our pre-flop action. What kind of hands are we three betting with? It's mainly polarized here. We are three betting ace king, queens, kings, aces, and hands like ace four suited and ace five suited. When we do have a medium strength hand, GTO prefers to flat instead of three bet. This is why when we three bet, we actually don't have many jacks, tens, or eights as much as the villain. Now let's look at villain's calling range. While our range is very polarized containing the best and worst hands, his range is actually very condensed. He doesn't have any aces or ace king suited. And while GTO says to flat kings here 23% of the time, in practice, most people will just four bet kings here and not call. A majority of his calling range consists of ace queen, queens, jacks, and tens, and that's why this flop is so bad for us. All right, so we check the flop, and villain checks back, and the turn is the six of clubs. And we can see here that GTO wants us to bet a lot more because the equity distribution has now changed. 
Before, when sets were the best hand possible, villain had the advantage over us. But when the six of clubs drops, we quickly catch up to the villain. So yes, GTO says with my specific holding, I can either check or bet here. Whereas if I had a club in my hand, I should almost always be betting this turn. After it goes check check on the turn, the river is the deuce of spades. And as we can see here, GTO just wants us to check. In fact, GTO says to mainly jam 3x the pot or check. And this is because we don't have any medium strength hands here. We mainly have air or flush and having the ace of clubs blocker would make a very good candidate to bluff jam 3x the pot. As we can see here, GTO Wizard tells us that it's got a great blocker score of 4 and 5. But I can't just bluff at it with my holding because I'd be over bluffing in that case. Alright, that concludes the GTO hand of the day. Again, you can use the link in the description below for a free trial of GTO Wizard. And if you guys enjoy it, you guys get 10% off your subscription. You guys won't regret it. Now let's get back to the vlog. Continuing where we left off, our stack dwindles to about $2,600 after an hour of being card dead and getting 3 bet a lot. And that's when we pick up Queen 9 of Diamonds and open to $50 under the gun. It folds around to the third blind. He just bought in for $1,000 so he's playing 50 big blinds effective. He makes the call. Going heads up to the flop, it comes Queen Jack 4, 1 spade and 2 clubs. And he donk $50. Pretty easy decision here, I just call. It turns to Jack of Spades, he checks, and I check back. The river is an interesting one, it's the Jack of Hearts. We now have a boat, and he bets $140. Now, in my opinion, this is a spot where you could call or raise. Obviously, I'm never folding here. Calling would be the lower variance option. You lose to quads, you chop with a queen, or you might catch a bluff. But there is the option of just raising and specifically jamming here. Now, we have some fun table talk here. All in. All in. I don't play Jack 4. No, but you probably play Jack 10. So yes, the main point of this jam is to get him off a of queen, but maybe, just maybe, he might self-destruct here and call me with a hand like 9s, but he does make the fold and he can't be too happy because another player at the table does tell him he had the jack, so he might be wondering if I bluffed him or not. Now we get to the biggest hand of the night. We agreed to do a round of double straddles, so the game is now 5, 10, 20, 40. My apologies for not peeling my cards here, but I have ace, eight of diamonds in the cutoff, and I open to $100. The big blind and third blind both call, and we go to a flop three ways. The flop comes king, eight, four, rainbow. They both check to me. The king hits my range pretty hard, so I go for a c-bet of $150 here. Only the big blind calls and the third blind folds, so we are down to heads up on the turn. The dealer puts out a miracle card for us. It's the eight of spades. We bink our trips. He checks to me, and I'm gonna continue betting here, now hoping he has a king. I bet 250. He goes into a deep tank for about a minute before finally making the call. The river is clean, it's the deuce of clubs. He checks once again and I bet out $600 here, hoping to get called by a king, a weaker 8, or maybe some weak pocket pair like 9s. This is a fun table and he starts talking. You just have one yellow behind you. Uh, yeah, I have a yellow. Would you, you said jack four? He announces he has jack four, and after tanking for almost five minutes, 
he makes the call. I show him my trips and he mucks. I'm pretty sure he did have jack 4 because uh, a jack did flash while he was folding and uh, it definitely wasn't the first time I've seen this guy play jack 4 so I really have to thank Robbie for this one. We play for a bit longer but it's always good to leave at a high point. So I shortly leave after this hand and I walk away with a profit of $1,921. Not bad at all for a 4 hour session. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment in the videos. It really helps with the algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog. See you guys.